Y'all know what it is, man. It's your boy PG the Hustler, man. Welcome to another episode of Talking Shit, episode seventy-eight. We got a pretty good one tonight, buddy. Um, couple things I want to talk about on here. Um, one situation is kind of weighing in on me and kind of bothering me. Like I, I don't. But we gonna get to it in a minute. Um, but without further ado, man, let's go ahead and crack this thing off, man. Let y'all see what this shit is about. First off, let y'all know, man, the Proud Boys niggas getting stroked. No homo. Pause. Check this shit out. The Proud Boys, the far-right group described by prosecutors as the chief instigators of the January 6th attack on the Capitol, watched their former leader go down today under the weight of a 22-year prison sentence, the longest sentence of any January 6th defendant so far. Enrique Tarrio, who the government accused of directing some of the actions of that day, was convicted of seditious conspiracy. Just before sentencing today, a contrite Tario apologized to law enforcement, lawmakers, and his family, and told the court, I was my own worst enemy. His sentence follows the fate of four other Proud Boys Ooh, members who also shit. received harsh sentences last 15, week, 18, all accused of 10. using violence to try and keep then-President Donald Trump in power. One of the charges, obstructing an official proceeding, has also been leveled against Mr. Trump in a separate indictment. He has pleaded not guilty. Mm-hmm. Let's get more now from Ken Delanian. What are we here for? To stop the steal. Tonight, a central figure in the attack on the U.S. Capitol has been handed the stiffest prison sentence so far. A judge ruled that Enrique Tarrio, one-time leader of the far-right Proud Boys, will spend 22 years behind bars. While not physically present during the January 6th riot, he directed others and celebrated afterward, saying in a text message, make no mistake, we did this. Prosecutors had sought 33 years for Tarrio, but Judge Timothy Kelly decided that was too long. Kelly also sentenced four other Proud Boys last week to lengthy prison terms, but far less than prosecutors had asked for. Some of them seen here at the Capitol. American citizens are storming the Capitol, taking it back right now. There's millions of people out here. This is crazy. This is such history. (laughs) Tario and three other Proud Boys were convicted in May of seditious conspiracy. Prosecutors said their goal was to orchestrate violence to keep then-President Trump in office and that the Proud Boys were behind every major breach of the Capitol during the attack. Afterwards, on CNN, Tario ridiculed members of Congress who huddled in fear as rioters breached the building. I'm not going to cry about a group of people that don't give a crap about their constituents. But a different tone in court today, telling the judge, I am not a political zealot and saying to the men and women of law enforcement who answered the call that day, I'm sorry. Ken, this sentence is four years longer than the previous longest sentence for January 6th. That's right, Lester, and there have been over 1,100 criminal cases so far. The judge called Tario's apology better than nothing, but he said he didn't believe Tario was remorseful for the crimes he was convicted of. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking... Boy, they getting all them motherfuckers. I just really wanted to start. I really wanted y'all to see that shit. I wanted to start off and and and, and tap y'all on that. I'm mad, like none of my. I ain't mad, but you know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm tripping. Ain't none of my people there, so we can really discuss this shit. Cause um, I think that they deserve every bit. And I think they should have actually, actually got more. You know what I'm saying? I think they should have got more. They deserve more. Because the shit they was on was some, this shit got to be stopped, man. This ain't the way motherfuckers are supposed to act. This ain't the way government is. This ain't the way government go. This ain't the way this shit is controlled. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't going to get into politics. You know, this ain't no political show. We're going to do some stuff on that so I can, bro, I can, you know what I'm saying? Let y'all motherfuckers know I ain't just up here spitting hot air, man. I know what the fuck I be talking about on some of this shit, man. I don't know everything, but I know a lot about a little. I know a little about a lot. You know what I'm saying? However that it go. Whatever. Anyway, moving on, man. Like I said, I want to get to this right here because a lot of y'all may have seen, um, may know and may have not seen, may or may have seen, I should say. <sighs> These niggas, man, what, who raising you motherfuckers? But just recently, I believe in New York, I think, somewhere, a woman was hit 
upside the head with a brick for not giving a guy her number. I will take a pull on that just in case you ain't hear what I said. Just in case you ain't seen that shit yet. A woman was hit upside the head with a brick because she did not give a nigga her number. Like, who fucking raised you niggas? Seriously. Like, this shit. I'm telling you, man. A bunch of bitch ass niggas. And a lot of y'all motherfucking single mothers is the problem. Is the reason why these niggas is unhinged. And yeah, I said it. And I'm going to. I stand on that shit. Because y'all teaching these niggas wrong. Y'all don't even let. Y'all, a lot of y'all don't even got brothers and, and cousins and uncles that y'all don't even let spend time and develop bonds, masculine bonds with these kids so they can get these talks and, and learn how to handle rejection or learn how to, you know what I'm saying, be smooth or learn how to even talk to the ladies. Like, like what the fuck is wrong with you, you niggas, man? Like, and, and, like I said, I stand on that shit. I really do stand on that shit. A lot of single women don't fuck they, they kids up, man. They boys up. By putting silly shit in their head, man. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, that's a whole nother topic, man. Watch this shit, man. After uncensored, a lot of hot topics to get to tonight. We begin with a rejection that took a dangerous turn. A Houston woman is recovering after she says a man hit her in the head, in the face, with a brick. Robichet says she attacked, says he attacked her after she refused to give him her cell phone number all while a crowd of men stood there watching these niggas did nothing have i ever done to anybody in my life to deserve this literally a man asked me for my number i said no and he he picked up a brick in front of so many men and was like what you gonna do and i told all these men like yo why is this man got a brick on my face According to her so social all media, that transpired happened, and nobody over the said weekend, nothing? we reached out to HPD for some information and have yet to hear back. Joining Should us now to sorry, talk about man. it, public relations specialist Bridget Holden, Latoria Lemon, along with pastor and journalist Dr. Ruth Olson. Glad to all have you here on the fact room. When you guys this. see this, and number one, she's saying there were a group of men standing around, probably mm-hmm. on their damn cell phones. Yeah looking to get the shot instead of trying to protect a woman. Your thoughts on this? I feel like black women are not being protected these days. I mean, but then, I don't know if you watch social media, but then there are a lot of women on here who are saying, well, I don't need a man and I don't need this and I don't need that. So we kind of have to take accountability. If we're out here saying that, then are the men going to protect us? But I thought that chivalry is, I guess, is dead. No, it ain't dead, 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 dead. Yeah. <laughs> and Barry. Latoria, right. your thoughts about no, this? Not. Number one, first of all, someone hitting her right. with a brick because yeah. she refused to give their number right. if all the facts are correct. Absolutely. So I understand rejection is hard, right? But my real issue here, of course, I don't condone any violence and I don't like it, but the men that stood around and yeah. watched, people are no longer getting any type of help. in in situations that they need help in. Mm -hmm. People are not being decent. People are are making everything a joke, everything a moment to go viral. And this could have been, this is this lady's health. You know, this could have went even worse. And she could still be in the hospital with severe damages. Mm -hmm. And so to see that nobody helped her, I mean, that's heartbreaking. Completely. And of course, Dr. Olison, we're I talking about a new generation that's not used to rejection, not playing the old school mm-hmm. rule games where you just keep trying, you keep trying. <laughs> yeah. And then you have people who, if they see someone who's in trouble, they think videotaping it is their response to helping them out, and that's not mm-hmm. the case. Yeah, they're all of a sudden citizen journalists yeah. instead of <laughs> helping. Uh, uh, I want to mm-hmm. just express so much compassion Uh, for this young lady and I also want to express a lot of concern for where we are if people can stand around and watch that we do have to get involved she asked a question in that she said what did I ever do to deserve this Mm, nothing nothing. Nothing. you didn't do anything to deserve that so uh, we want to put that out there and 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 also let's make an appeal that let's help people 
Right. Mm -hmm. Let's, we've got to get back involved. That's who we are. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the social media has separated us, and a lot of us think, well, it's just, it's just me. It's all about me. It's going viral. It's, it, you know, it's, it's not about other people. And we need relationships. We need uh, other people. One thing for sure, she made the right decision in not giving him her phone number. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And still here on The Fact, another viral video moment to talk about several employees at a jewelry store in California could be seen on video attacking a man who attempted to rob the store. That's the crazy, suspect used bear That's crazy as fuck, y'all. So look, <coughs> I'm going to let them finish saying what they got to say to talk watching this. Watching them tear this damn what's the name. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> they wrestling like a motherfucker. <laughs> oh, oh, this is what he's in. But no, man, look, man. I agree with everything that they just, that every one of these, you know what I'm saying? These OGs just said up here, man, um, like, to some degree, our black women aren't being protected, which they need to be. I mean, I know for a fact, like, I don't, I'm, I'm the type of person where I definitely would step up and say something. Even if I didn't intervene already, I would have said something to... You know what I'm saying? Even tell her, hey, yo, just get, just dip. Just leave. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just go. Run. You know what I'm saying? Run. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then, hey, like, this is the reason why motherfuckers carry these days. I ain't gonna hold you. Because right there, that's a perfect situation. You can't tell me that all them niggas there standing there ain't had no peace on them or couldn't or could. The thing is, all these niggas around there, that's probably their people's. That's probably one of their homeboys and shit, and they not gonna say nothing. They know he dead wrong, but at the same time, is that that's the kind of friend you wanna have? That's the kind of people you wanna hang around as a grown ass person? I don't give a fuck. Kid, if you, when you in high school and shit, yeah, I get it. You around motherfuckers all day because y'all in school, whatever. When you grown and you make the cognizant choice to hang around certain people and to be around other people like to be around toxic motherfuckers and I ain't just talk people always use toxic as a relationship to far as men and the women and relationship relationship but toxic can go a lot of ways man toxic can also go as far as friendship relationships you can have a fucking friend that do nothing but get you in fucking trouble and you fuck your whole life up because you either trying to impress that person you think they cool or you think they cool. You just sitting up there and you just taking whatever they do and all oh, that's just because they them and oh, all that's that motherfucker crazy. All that. No, that nigga's a fool and he going to fuck your shit up too if you let him. So, man. I don't personally know no niggas that would hit no woman with no brick and I refuse to associate with any motherfucker who would think that's okay. And fuck anybody who think that it was okay for her to get hit with this brick. I don't see how you could think so. And at this point it's so really it's so I don't give a, I don't give a fuck if it's a woman or not. But honestly, you definitely need to protect the woman. But to see any human being get hit upside the head with a brick for no reason. I mean, even if I don't care if two niggas is fighting, man. I'm the type of nigga that might step in like, hey, yo, 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 hey, nigga, put that motherfucker down, man. Y'all niggas just scrap. If you so bad, if y'all niggas so cold, just scrap. Just hand to hand. Y'all niggas is that cold. Just do that. Just scrap, my nigga, because... Cause that fucking That shit is for the birds bro Like that Like you Like A brick can really take a motherfucker out You can get a life sentence A motherfucker might not be here for, a Person might die And then On top of that A motherfucker Might get a life sentence over that kind of shit A fucking brick To the To the To the noggin And not even being funny man It's a good thing that 
she survived and that her head was hard enough to take the impact. And I'm not even being, I'm not even in no joking way because certain, everybody's made different. Everybody different. Certain people might, that's not going to last. Certain people, where she, she got hit in the fucking temple. Certain people might, might not be able to withstand that. Maybe even a certain age of people might not even be able to withstand that shit. You're taking somebody out. That is deadly fucking force. That's a deadly weapon. Now, I mean, I'm not no fool. Now, I ain't finna go up against no, you know, I ain't bringing no knife to no gunfight. But at the same time, I am and I do got the type of personality that might talk to a motherfucker and try to say, hey, yo, man, yo, let's de-escalate this shit. Like, hey, yo. Is it worth this shit? Like, think. Because at some point, it becomes not worth it. This shit is not worth it. Any of the consequences that you get ready to face for doing, for picking up any kind of deadly weapon and striking somebody with it or shooting somebody or stabbing somebody or running somebody over or whatever the fuck, that shit's not going to be worth what you finna face, man. And let's get let's just be honest. I'm gonna try to follow up on this on this shit because one thing for sure, two things for certain, it's too much technology out here for that man not to be caught. You know what I'm saying? Like I just can't believe that he's not caught. So it will be some I I think it's gonna be popping up lately that we're gonna we're gonna catch that shit. We gonna catch, I think we gonna see what's up and they gonna get him. But I mean, just think, man, that could have been somebody's aunt, sister, daughter. That is somebody's daughter. Like, like you motherfuckers and y'all's, y'all claim to be so fucking hard and so tough, but to hit a woman with a brick because she said no to a phone number like that's really some pussy shit like that's really soft as fuck you could have just went on about your day bro but even if they don't catch your ass karma is an ugly bitch karma is an ugly bitch anyway moving on what is this? Now, a couple of these things I ain't seen. Now, what's this? 93-year-old great-grandma sued by Hill. Uh-oh, what's the fuck going on? A dispute on, over legacy and land. That's happening right now on Hilton Island in South Carolina. Somebody oh, always did this shit. 93-year-old Justine Wright is at the center of a lawsuit that's picked up attention nationwide. As development goes up around her home, she is literally in the middle of what developers hope could be a new home community. But for Wright, it's so much more. CNN's Diane Gallagher reports. We are connected to this land. Our blood runs through these trees. No matter what, we will keep this land. So well, this land's gonna be here with us if it's gonna be another 200 years. <laughs> That's the way we look at it. But not everyone has that same view. The serene marsh and sandy beaches of Hilton Head Island have been home to the Gullah Geechee community since before oh, America Geechees. became America. But today, community members say development threatens those families who still call it home. Why should we give up such a precious gift that God has given us? Josephine Wright has lived in this house on Hilton Head Island for 30 years. But she says her family's <coughs> home has been on this land since the Civil War, purchased by freedmen and passed down for generations. Her husband, a Gullah descendant, wanted to be sure to keep the land in the family after his passing. I feel so much pride and comfort in knowing that this is where I will be for the rest of my life. But the 93-year-old great-great-grandmother has felt little comfort here over the past few months. This is when we start hearing the trees, the boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Wright is being sued by a company with plans to build 147 three-story townhomes along this Jonesville Road community, a historic Gullah Geechee neighborhood. Our blood, sweat, and tears are in this land. My ancestors are buried here down at the end of the road. Today, oh construction gosh, is yes, closing in that. around Wright's modest home. Have the developer at any point come to you to speak face to face about this? No, I've never spoken to any one of them. 
They have never knocked on my door. She says about five years ago, a woman did ask her about selling the land to an interested anonymous buyer for $39,000. And I said, you are insulting my intelligence. And would you give them that message? She says her first communication with the company, Bailey Point Investment LLC, was being served legal notice, which alleges a satellite dish, a shed, and a portion of Wright's screened in back porch are sitting outside of her property line, encroaching on theirs according to their land survey. The lawsuit seeks removal, plus just an adequate compensation for its loss of the use and enjoyment of their property and expenses related to delays in development. Bailey Point says that the corner? That little corner is on their property. So the issue is that corner? Yes. Wright has filed a countersuit alleging Bailey Point and their affiliates are using harassment and intimidation tactics to pressure her off the land. Now, Bailey Point has filed a response denying any harassment as well as any previous offers to purchase her land. She has received an outpouring of support and donations, even from celebrities like Tyler Perry, Snoop Dogg, Fantasia, and NBA player Kyrie Irving. The town of Hilton Head just announced it is pausing all construction in line with their town code, refusing to issue Bailey Point building permits until the lawsuits are resolved. Mm. But Josephine Wright isn't alone in her fight. She speaks to the Gullah culture and Let's the go. Gullah desire to fight back. Luana Graves Sellers runs a nonprofit called the Low Country Gullah Foundation, focused on helping prevent land loss in the Gullah Geechee community. Her nonprofit estimates that since Hilton Head Island became a vacation destination after Mainland Bridge was built in the 1950s, the Gullah Geechee have lost nearly two thirds of their acreage, mostly due to rising property taxes and problems with something called heirs property. How pervasive is that on this island now? It's pervasive here but it's pervasive throughout the South. And unfortunately, heirs' property is the primary way that black people in America are losing their land. Heirs' property is a type of land ownership where a single property may be inherited by multiple members of a family for generations after the original owner passes away. But there's often a lack of clear legal documentation, making families vulnerable to land loss when there are disagreements within the family over selling. Mm. Some of these cases here, the land is being purchased by developers. Just look at this. This is one of the most peaceful areas and lost by the Gullah Geechee. But in the case of Josephine Wright, she's standing firm on her ground. That. Well, on, let me Joe. put it to you this way. I've never backed down on, a, on anything that was right. Right. Now, on the past couple months leading up to this week, CNN has repeatedly reached out to Bailey Point Investment and really anyone that we could find associated with the project. A named developer did respond, telling us that they're not the developer of the, excuse me, a named organizer did respond, telling us they're not the developer of the project, but rather an investment company that financed the deal. But look, we've reached out to lawyers for Bailey Point. We've reached out to the architect, even the engineer for the proposed subdivision. Hey, they also have responded. Meanwhile, Josephine Wright, says that she plans uh, to continue this fight. She wants her 40 grandchildren, 50 great grandchildren and 16 soon to be 17 great great grandchildren to enjoy that property until they're 93 years old. Exactly. And that's how it's supposed to be done. <clears throat> the thing is, put it in a trust, whatever I always told y'all. Family trust and that heir shit will not happen. Family trust and that air shit will not happen. All right. On to the next. But y'all better help Granny Joe. I hope she get to stay in her crib, man. Is not political speech. This morning, new details in the ongoing debate over the future Atlanta Public Safety Training Just Center. Future. Georgia Attorney General Chris Carr has now indicted more than 61 people. They're accused of conspiring to use violence during protests of the facility that activists call Cop City. This indictment includes RICO charges against all 61. Some are also facing domestic terrorism and arson charges. 
In total, the document lists 225 incidents where defendants allegedly worked together to prevent construction. The indictment calls people with the Defend the Atlanta Forest Group as militant anarchists. It alleges each defendant knowingly joined a conspiracy to stop construction, but community activists oh, say they have a right to protest, up. and the timing of this case is suspicious. This is an attempt to criminalize the movement and to make sure that the light is shines someplace else, as opposed to having people talk about the fact that Cop City is something that's not wanted in this city. This morning, their work continues. Activists are still collecting signatures as part of a vote to stop Cop City referendum petition. We have much more reaction on these indictments, plus a look at how the defense may frame its argument in court. You can find it all at 11alive.com. Wow, Cop City. A deep hell of man. So uh, you might be a, a little... Uh -oh. Oh, no. A deep Ellen man says everything he and his daughter That's owned crazy. was thrown in a dumpster after the management of his apartment building accidentally ordered maintenance to clean out his rental. It turns out apartment management had the wrong unit number, and now that man says that he is out tens of thousands of dollars. Building management argues he never should have been living there to begin with. Consumer reporter Steve Noviello is on your side tonight. Used to have a couch here, a TV stand with the TV. After Johnny Abney spent years building a life. This was my daughter's snack drawer. For himself and his nine-year-old daughter. It was a closet full of clothes. This is all that's left of their stuff. Everything gone. Everything they own. Clothing items, all my groceries. They cleared out my whole refrigerator full of groceries. Is gone. Well, we had a shower curtain here. Not stolen, thrown in the dumpster by order of the management at the Hamilton, the high-end mid-rise apartment building where Johnny and his daughter lived in the deep Elm neighborhood of Dallas. They came to my door and cleaned everything out from my daughter's clothes to my clothes to everything from a toothbrush, bathing items like they pretty much left me with nothing. It's all in this police report Johnny filed when he returned home from work in late July to find his apartment door unlocked and the contents cleared out. According to the report's narrative, a leasing agent on site said there was a misunderstanding and maintenance accidentally cleared out Abney's unit instead of the unit next door where a tenant was being evicted. All of Johnny's belongings had been thrown in the dumpster hours earlier and had been picked over by the other residents. This is video Johnny took of his discarded stuff. He says his mattress had been urinated on. Not only did they put my stuff out, they watched people take all my property all day. Property management offered to get what they could from the trash and return it to Johnny's unit. Johnny said they even had that stained mattress professionally cleaned, but most of his and his daughter's stuff was gone for good. This door is completely gone, and this one, they just completely just broke it. Much of what did make it back from the dumpster he showed us was damaged. They told me that it was a mistake. They apologized the first night. They were overly apologetic, like, let us know anything missing. But that quickly took a turn. Even though it was your stuff, it's her apartment. It's under her name. The contract is in her name and her name solely. This is video Johnny recorded of a conversation he had with one of the leasing agents who was quick to point out the apartment in which he and his daughter lived was leased by his ex-girlfriend who had since moved out of state. Johnny was subletting without permission and even though these receipts provided to us by an attorney for the Hamilton show that Johnny paid the near $3,000 in rent each month, Nigga. any direct discussion about making him whole was off the table. We are buying it like by law, we cannot discuss anything with anybody that is not her. According to this lawsuit Johnny has now filed against the property management company, they gave him 24 hours to fill out his own rental application or face eviction. I've already lost property, now you're trying to kick me off the property at short notice with no resolve. Here's the eviction notice. It was posted on his door the next day. Rent was paid in full. There was no reason to go into his apartment. There was no reason to throw anything away. Jason Friedman is Johnny's attorney. He says the issue of who was on the lease Look is irrelevant. Goofy, the apartment right? building, they didn't know when they threw all that stuff away whose stuff it was, whether it was the person on the lease or his. And adds Johnny chose not to fill out the application or pay the fee required for one very simple reason. He chose not to because he said, I want to resolve the situation with my property that you threw away before I decide 
if I'm going to stay in this building. An attorney for the Hamilton, who would not speak to us on camera, but did communicate by phone and email, said on behalf of the building, even if Johnny did fill out the rental application, he would have been denied because he already violated the lease terms as an unauthorized occupant. With me losing all my property, like, that's the last thing on my mind. According to the lawsuit, the Hamilton also alleged there was counterfeit money pulled from Johnny's things, another reason they say he would not be welcome to stay. We asked them to provide a police report, photos, or video, any evidence at all. They provided none. They left me without underwear, toothpaste, everything. Back at Johnny's, among the discarded pile of trashed school supplies with which his daughter was supposed to start the fifth grade, we found our own. This play money, clearly marked as copy, right next to what's left of his daughter's bed. We sent a list of questions to the Hamilton via their attorney. They all went not unanswered. They would not sit down with us for an on-camera interview. Games, they did yo. say that they asked Johnny for a list of what was missing from his refrigerator so that they could establish a value for reimbursement. Johnny says that actually never happened. He and his daughter moved out just a few days after we met him. They are now staying with family temporarily. Wow. <clears throat> all right, so... Y'all know what I got to say about that. Niggas, 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 niggas. Something I very, 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 very. I don't even, I can't. Something I stress so, 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 so tough. Stop staying with bitches. Stop moving in. I'm I'm live. I'll see you in a minute. Yep. Stop moving in with bitches because when it don't work, shit like this happened. She moved out of town. She said, "Yeah, you can stay here. You pay the rent. You got the baby." I don't know what the whole situation is, but she's gone. She probably went to go hot girl summer it or whatever the fuck. Because, yeah, what is it? August, September right now? Yeah, she hot girl summer in it. She been out there hot girl summer in it while this nigga been paying the rent all motherfucking month, all motherfucking year. And she done left his ass. And now he asked out. They done tossed his fucking shit. Every fucking thing. And then they want to blame it on... Oh, he was, they was using it wrong. He was sublet. Nah, 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 nah. Like the lawyer say, no way, no way. Because you motherfuckers did not know that at the time. Y'all don't know what kind of agreement they got. He might, it might not even be a sublet. She might be away on business. She might be an actress. She might be doing any fucking thing. She might have been sending him the money. They might not even be broke up. But my whole thing is, like I said, stop staying with it. Wherever you lay your head, put your name on the motherfucking lease or mortgage or whatever the fuck. If you decide to let that woman into your life and stay with you, cool. If not, keep it pushing. If y'all get married, put both y'all name on there if you choose to do so. So if everything will work out, everything will be split down the middle. Things can be sort resolved. Things can be solved. Don't put yourself in a position where you asked the fuck out. This nigga old as hell and got to go live with family members. The decisions y'all make, my fellas. Come on, man. Come on, fellas. My guys, my guys, let's get it together, man. Rule number one. Not even rule number one. Just one of the fucking rules. It is rule number one. Have your own fucking shit. Stop driving these hoes cars. Stop driving their cars and shit. Having them mad and shit. Pissed off. You ain't bring her back. She gotta go. She gotta go. Get motherfucking a ride from some damn body. Cause your ass ain't got her motherfucking. Her car back or some shit like that 
or any motherfucking thing. Had to check on my people to see if anybody slid through real quick. Um, but yeah, nah, man. Stop living with these hoes. Fuck these hoes. Stop living with them, man. Please, please get your own shit. Anyway, man, moving on to the next topic, man. It might be a, a little sad that summer's winding down, but let's be honest. As parents, it is also quite okay to be a little excited as well, especially for the kids to return to school. I love the music, too. On that note, a story Ooh, from today.com caught our attention. So here's the deal. Nicole Jackson, a 43-year-old single mom, went viral for her TikTok listing rules for what is and not going to happen. Oh, yeah, this is my shit. I've seen this shit. What we're not going to do is change up our stomach energy. That's right. You've been living on a diet of hot chips, chicken nuggets, and, and every popsicle mm. and disgusting drink known to man without one stomach ache. You're not about to come to me talking about my stomach hurt like you got the intestinal tract of a geriatric Crohn's patient. That's right. This ain't that. This ain't what that. we're not going to do is act like we can't wake up. You've been getting up at 677 every morning. And yes, I said 677 because mm -hmm. of some ungodly hour that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Asking me about some breakfast. Mm -hmm. This ain't that. This ain't I that. I laughed out loud. This ain't it's like that. like in my house. Uh, so, <laughs> two million views later, Nicole is with us exclusively this morning, <laughs> along with her 13-year-old son, Kai, who apparently spent the entire summer eating hot chips he's and so chicken nuggets. He's so cute. And he's her idiot. We're happy you're here this morning. Thank you. We're glad to be here. So let's back up. This so this ready. video went viral ago, but it's timeless. So it's like it's going viral all over again. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think it is? You know what? It's just living a realistic simplicity. It's literally relatable. Yes, realistic so simplicity. That's relatable. Relatable. When you watch the video, to if tell you're a parent that's ever sent relatable. your grade schooler to school, these are the things that we go through, and it's taking oh, the intrusive discussion. thought and saying it out loud yeah. in a way that's receivable. That's all it is. I love that. We all sit up here and look at our kids like, your stomach hurts. Oh, I'm sorry, poo. And then you go, your stomach ain't hurt. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know her stomach, her stomach yes. ain't hurt all summer. All and summer all of a sudden it hurts. <laughs> like, okay, go to the bathroom and then let's go. We're, go we're going to school. Right. The 677 is if you've had babies or anything, you know, when the kid wakes up super early in yeah. the morning and you can't open but one eye, like <laughs> that whole thing. It's it's just relatable. That's, That's all it right. is. We're all raising the same children. Yes, we are. Yeah. And that, when yeah. I saw it, I was like, oh, this is my house. Especially the part where you start talking about um, the, the permission slips yes. and waiting until the, the last, last day. Like, I'm, yes. I'm not, oh not yeah. going to have a heart attack <laughs> because your lack of self, what self is it? preparation. What does this do? Today? Today? Can you sign it? Listen, I need to make an igloo by the morning. <laughs> when did you know about this, son? <laughs> Three we weeks ago. Right, yeah. I forgot to give you the paper. So now we're in the middle of Walmart trying to find these supplies. I love it. And my blood pressure's up. The igloo gets done, right. but you know, it was like, too much. Kai, let me bring you in here because I also have an eighth grade son, which is why I felt like sh your mom was spying on what was going on in our house. But here's the thing. My son is also on social media. His friends are on social media, so he sees it. So what about you? When you see these videos and you see they're going viral, what do you think? Your friends think? Uh, I think that they're hilarious. You do? Mm -hmm. um, and also, I feel like there's some lies in it. Oh. <laughs> You know what, Kyle, I want to show our viewers okay. at home. This was part of, of your, your <laughs> video said, response he says he lying. to, to what your What we're not going to do is wake me up on oh. hard and joyfully on the first day of school. Oh, yeah. I know you happy summer is over and all, but I don't want to be at that place. This right. ain't that. What this we're not going to do is interrupt me during my game. That you does. know I can't pause it, and I need to decompress. <laughs> this ain't that. <laughs> what we're not going to do is forgetting that we love each other. Fact. You're an awesome mom, and I'm an awesome kid. And this is. ain't that. This oh, ain't that. Wow. <laughs> you guys have a, cool. a, a bright future here. This is something. Listen, we're just doing our regular, and that's what I think that that's the relatable cool. part. We're everyday people. I'm not some big fancy named person. I'm a a mom at home and everybody can relate to that yeah. again realistic simplicity the video while it's funny is just basically teaching boundaries 
as for you as you a parent, standards and expectations for the child, which is what you should be teaching them anyway. Yes. So, so you just you just laugh at the little weeds that grow in the garden. Just laugh at they them. They do need to figure out how to pause yeah, this I video. Did. So I, I, see this. <laughs> I see this. What I love <laughs> about the two of you man, is I the love like is palpable. Yeah. Like yeah. the dynamic oh, that, that you have with sure. Kai, uh, it shines through. I do want to go back to what you just said, though, because you said mom lied about something in the video. I what wanted to, to give you a response, give you a chance to respond to some factual inaccuracy. Okay, so I didn't eat chicken nuggets all summer. <laughs> 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 Sure. I'm about to say, Not That awesome. So you're enjoying your time, hopefully, in New York City. I know you have to go back and, and go home and go, go to school. But I heard you love McDonald's. Is that true? And I heard the one in Times Square apparently tastes yummy. Yes. Okay, so we have a treat for you. And Mom, I heard on his first day of school, you enjoyed a little mimosa. Oh, I did. To you cheer. You won't believe listen. where so we got oh, yeah. a couple of treats, you guys. Yes. Fresh from the Times Square Mickey nuggets. D's. I love it. And our own kitchen. Yes. <laughs> Mimosas. <laughs> And bacon, egg and cheese, and bagel. And you have to have another mimosa yes. to celebrate Kai's triumphant return to school. Thanks. Um, and you know what else? Tastes just as good. Mom, <laughs> you are doing a phenomenal job. Thank you he very is an much. outstanding young man. Thank you. You are doing a rock star job. I'm so happy Thank that we you. had a chance to have here's what, you guys. Here's why I love Kai. Why? He didn't even wait for the commercial break. He's into it. <laughs> Kai's like, y'all can keep talking. Okay, I'm going to eat my, my breakfast habit. Cheers. 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 You guys. Cheers. Cheers. And by the way, thank you, Nancy, school year. for your service as a mom. You're a rehab nurse as well. I am, yes, so I am. thanks for doing God's work. Kai, keep going. <laughs> thank you. Keep How fast can you eat the whole thing? It's the I real just want to say so hi to my family. <laughs> hi, family. My family at Larchwood. I want to say hi to the Dob and the Virtual cares, Cafe man. and everybody that's been so supportive. This has been an awesome and amazing experience. Wow. And just simply just speaking my truth and being related. Thank you so Great. much. Thank, Thank you, Kai. You. Thank you. Thank you, too. You really going to eat that like that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Hey. <laughs> By the way, for, for more of Nicole's story, be sure to check out today.com. It's, it's, it's a fascinating mm -hmm. piece. I love it. Mr. Roker. Yes, Nicole, I got uh, one more for you that uh, Al Roker Sr. used to say, I can't miss you if you don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Oh, <sweet. laughs> Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show Al every Roker. weekday. That's funny as hell. All right, that was a cool one, man. Is that the last one, man? Is that what we on? No, I think we got another one. Let's see if we got another one here. Oh, yeah, we most definitely do. Let's get to this. What we? What, what's going on here? This is a big day. Because Firefest 2 tickets are here oh and apparently sold gosh. out according to its founder, Billy McFarland. It has been the absolute wildest are journey you to get here. It is one way to put it. <laughs> Much to the shock of the internet, the widely reported and documented disaster that was 2017's original Firefest, organized by Billy McFarland and Ja Rule, is back in another iteration. Are you in a case of what you paid for versus what ever. you got, the ads for the OG Firefest boasted luxe accommodations in the Bahamas, parties with supermodels, and big name performances. They better tell the truth. You got some fucked up shit. What ticket holders got tents. were wet FEMA tents, no concerts, and cold cheese sandwiches. In 2019, I spoke to Marianne Roll, who owns the Exuma Points restaurant, mm -hmm. where many attendees and staff had to stay once they arrived. She blew through her own 50 grand life savings trying to help stranded festival goers and staff. And they found favor with me, and at the last minute, it was too late to switch the camera. At the time, Roll said numerous attempts to contact McFarland went unanswered. Eventually, through GoFundMe, she was able to recoup her losses. Meantime, McFarland was in the middle of a federal investigation over the disaster that sent him to prison, convicted for defrauding investors and on the hook to repay his victims $26 million. He was released from jail in the spring of 2022 after serving less than four years of his six-year sentence. As you might know, I effed around. And because of that, I definitely found out. But what about this time? And it really all started during the seventh month stint in solitary confinement. Firefest 2 boasts ticket prices as high as $8,000. It's purported to take place in December 2024, somewhere in the Caribbean, but there is still no set island, no venue, no accommodations, and no musical lineup. That doesn't seem to bother this couple who told CBS News they already coughed up about 550 bucks each oh, for tickets to a festival that still largely remains a mystery. 
our main concern is that we don't know if big headliners will be willing to, you know, take that risk to be in something so controversial. I think we're going to stay optimistic, but we're going to, you know, expect that there may be some cheese sandwiches. Whatever they eat, it won't be in the Bahamas. The Ministry of Tourism told CBS News in a statement, quote, the government of the Bahamas will not endorse or approve any event associated with Billy McFarland, that, adding that he is considered to be a fugitive there with several pending complaints against him. For Inside Edition Damn, Digital, I'm boy. Stephanie Officer. Man, listen. I fucking cry. So that's it, y'all, for the night, man. I definitely fucking cried on that, man. If y'all don't know nothing about the Fire Festival, <coughs> please, please, please look that up. Oh my gosh. I'm just, you know, look that up and come back to me. Come come back to me. Come back, man, and holler at me. Y'all see me wherever y'all see me, man. Y'all drop a drop a what's the name on your boy. Uh you know what I mean? <laughs> Let me know what y'all think about that fire festival too, my nigga. That shit is so fucking dumb. I can't believe this nigga trying to do the same shit again. Anyway, man. It was a cool little show, man. It went by fast. I wish my folks would have came through, but it's all good. They probably busy, man. I checked them out another day, man. But you know the show go on, man. Um, and it's always a seat at the table for all of my folks, man. Even you, man. Just let me know. You know what I'm saying? If you want to slide through, man, DM me. And, uh, you know, y'all keep, keep it moving, man. Like we always say, man. Love somebody, man. Go tell somebody you love them. Go hug them. Tell your family that you love them. Man, life is not promised. You know what I mean? Hey. Oh, and y'all got two motherfucking days. The In My Own Lane single comes out on Friday, September 8th. That is the fucking date. Told y'all that last week. Tell y'all that this week. And I'm trying to look at, when it's confirmed, I'll let y'all know. I'm trying to look at Halloween for the whole album. I don't know if I'm going to change the name of the album. I don't know if to, I don't know. 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 I don't know what's going on. But it's on the way, y'all. It is on the way. So once that time comes, I'll go have something special for y'all. I'm going to be doing a couple more things. I'm trying to get used to trying to advertise more. Uh, that's something I'm not good at. I'm not a boaster. And to me, it just, it's, I don't know, it kind of feels like the spirit of boasting. Um, that's not what I'm about. Uh, I don't make music to impress people. I make music, I make music cause it's things I want to say. Um, and that's how I get it off my chest. It's really like therapy for me. So, hey, man, check that shit out, man. Check it out. Don't check it out. Give me the love. Give me the hate. Man, I want it all. Um, or if you fuck with me, you know what I'm saying? Check it out. If you don't fuck with me, check it out so you can hate on it. Whatever. I appreciate it. And all you motherfuckers that act like you fuck with me, check it out. You know what I'm saying? Hey, and on that note. I love y'all. Y'all fucking with me for real, man. And we will check y'all out next week, man. Don't forget all DSPs. I don't give a fuck what you listen to. iTunes, YouTube, all that shit. September 8th in my own lane. PG the Hustler, man. Check it out. All right, y'all. Love. Peace.